Little Dog the Witches. Bruno Jenkins disappeared. The Grand High Witch was staring, starting to talk again. I am now going to prove to you that, she said, that this recipe is working to perfection. You understand, of course, that you can set the alarm clock to go off at any time you like. It does not have to be nine o'clock. So yesterday, I am personally preparing a small quality of the magic formula in order to give you a public demonstration. But I'm making one small change in the recipe. Before I am roasting the alarm clock, I'm setting it to go off. Not at nine o'clock the next morning, but at half past three this afternoon. And that, she said, glancing at her wristwatch, is in precisely seven minutes time. The audience of witches was listening intensely, sensing that something dramatic was about to happen. So what am I doing yesterday with this magic liquid? As Miss the Grand High Witch, I will tell you what I am doing. I am putting one droplet of it into a very squishy chocolate bar, and I am giving this bar to a repulsive, smelly little boy who is hanging around the lobby of the hotel. The Grand High Witch paused. The audience remained silent, waiting for her, her to go on. I've watched this repulsive little brute gobbling up the squishy bar of chocolate, and when he has finished, I said to him, was it good? He said, it was great. And I said to him, would you like some more? And he said, yes. So I said, I will give you six more chocolate bars like that. If you will meet me in the ballroom of this hotel at 25 past three tomorrow afternoon. Six bars, cried this greedy little spin. I'll be there. You bet I'll be there. So the stage is set, shouted the Grand High Witch. I prove of the pudding is go is about to begin. Do not forget that before I'm roasting the alarm clock yesterday, I am setting it for half past three today. It is now. She's glancing at her watch. It is now exactly twenty five minutes past three. And the nasty little stinker, who will be turning into a mouse in five minutes' time, should at this very moment be standing outside the door. And by gum, she was absolutely right. The boy, who, whoever he might be, was already rattling the door handle and banging on the doors with his fist. Quick, quickly, shrieked the Grand High Witch, put on your wigs. Put on your gloves. Put on your shoes. These were a great rustle and bustles of putting on wigs and gloves and shoes. And I saw the Grand High Witch herself reach for her face mask and put it on over that revolting face of hers. It was astonishing how that mask transformed her. All of a sudden, she became once again a rather pretty young lady. Let me in came the boy's voice from behind the door. Where are those chocolate bars you promised me? I'm here to collect. Dish them out. He's not only smelly, he's also greedy. Said the Grand High Witch, remove, he of, remove the chain up from the door and let him come in. The extraordinary thing about the mask was that its lips moved quite naturally when she spoke. You really couldn't see it was a mask at all. One of the witches leaped to her feet and unfastened the chains. She opened the two huge doors. Then I heard her saying, Well, hello. Why, hello, little man. How lovely to see you. You have to come for your chocolate bars, have you not? They are all ready for you. Do come in. A small boy wearing a white t-shirt and grave shorts and gym shoes entered the room. I recognized him at once. He was 
called Bruno Jenkins, and he was staying in the hotel with his parents. I didn't care for him. He was one of those only those boys who was always eating something whenever you meet him. Meet him in the lobby, hotel lobby, and he is stuffing sponge cake into his mouth. Pass him in the corridor, and he is fishing potato crisp out of the bag by the fistful. Catching sight of him in the hotel garden, and he is wolf, wolf, wolfling a daily milk bar and has two more sticking out of his trouser pockets. What's more, Bruno never stopped boasting about how his father made more money than my father and that they owned three cars, but worse than that, yesterday morning I had found him peeling on the flagstones of the hotel tent and tear race with a magnified glass in his hands. There was a column of ants marching across one of the flags, so Bruno Jenkins was focusing the sun through his magnifying glass and roasting the ant one by one. I like watching them burn, he said. That's horrible, I cried. Stop doing it. Let's see if you stop me, he said. At that point, I had pushed him with my with all my might, and he had crashed sideways onto the flag snow. His magnified glass had splintered into many pieces, and he had leaped him shrieking, My father is going to get you for this. Then he had run off, presumptuously to find his wealthy dad. That was the last time I had seen Bruno Jenkins until now. I doubted very much that he was about to be turned into a mouse, although I must confess that I was secretly hoping it might happen either way. I didn't envy him being up there in front of those witches. Darling boy cooted the Grand High Witch from up the platform. I have your chocolates all ready for you. You come up here first and say hello to all these lovely ladies. Her voice was quite different now. It was a soft and gentle and absolutely dripping with syrup. Bruno was looking a bit bewildered, but he allowed himself to be led up onto the platform where he stood beside the Grand High Witch and said, Okay, where are my six bars of chocolate? I saw the witch who had let him in quietly putting the chains back on the door handle. Bruno didn't notice this. He was too busy asking for the, his chocolate. The time is now one minute before half past three, announced the Grand High Witch. What the heck is going on? Bruno asked. He wasn't frightened, but he wasn't looking exactly comfortable either. What is this? He said, give me my chocolate. 30 seconds to go, cried the Grand High Witch gripping Bruno by the arm. Bruno shook himself clear and started at her, stared at her. She stared back at him, smiling with his lips of her mask. Every witch in the audience was staring at Bruno. Twenty seconds, cried the Grand High Witch. Give me the chocolate, shouted Bruno, becoming suddenly suspicious. Give me the chocolate and let me out of here. Fifteen seconds, cried the Grand High Witch. Will one of you crazy punks kindly tell me what all this is about? shouted Bruno. Ten seconds, cried the, the Grand High Witch. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have ignited. I could have sworn I heard an alarm clock ring. I saw Bruno jump. He jumped as though someone had struck a hand hat pin deep into his bottom and he yelled, ow. He jumped so high that he landed on a small table up there on the stage and he stared hoping about on, hopping about on the the top of his table, waving his arm and yelling his head off. Then, suddenly, he became silent. His whole body stiffened. 
The alarm clock has gone off, shrieked the Grand High Witch. The mouse maker is beginning to work. She started ho hoping about the plat on the platform and clapping her gloved hands together. And then she shouted, the smelly brat is this filthy crumb, this horrid little louse will very, very soon become a lovely little mouse. Bruno was getting smaller by the second. I could see him shrinking. Now his clothes seemed to be disappearing on, and brown fur was growing all over his body. Suddenly he had a tail, and then he had whiskers. Then he had four feet. It was all happening so quickly. It was a matter of seconds only, and all at once he wasn't there anymore. A small brown mouse was turning around on the tabletop. Bravo, yelled the audience. She's done it. It works. It's fantastic. It's quadrial. It's the greatest yet. You are a miracle, old brainy one. They were all standing up and clapping and cheering, and the Grand High Witch produced a mouse trap for the folds of her dress and started to set it. Oh no, I thought, I don't want to see this. Bruno Jenkins might have been a bit of a stinker, but I'm dashed if I want to watch him having his head chopped off. Where is he? snapped the Grand High Witch, searching the platform. Where has a, that mouse got to? She couldn't find him. Clever Bruno must have jumped down off the table and scampered off into some corner or even down a s small hole. Thank heaven for that. It doesn't, it matters not, shouted the Grand High Witch. Silence and sit down.